Welcome back. Since we got the uh, blast booth working a lot better, I went ahead and put these drums back in and uh, worked on some of the nooks and crannies and and uh, just cleaned them up a little bit better. I haven't run them back to the parts washer yet. So <clears throat> what we're doing is we're knocking the races out of these freaking hubs, okay? They're just popping them out. I'll save these for old trophy material or something. But uh, here's kind of what the inside looks like without the race. I don't know if the lighting's going to be good or not. Anyhow, so there's a recess in there. And I don't know what this camera can see. In fact, let me lower this camera. Here's a better look at it. Okay, right there. So we're going to hit it. We're going to hit it. So we're just going to work back and forth until that race pops up. This is not how you reinstall them, though. Okay, pretty simple. Flip it over, rinse and repeat. That one came out almost too easy. Okay, let's go ahead and rinse these off and uh, get them ready for paint. Getting in here where we uh, missed it from before. Can't get it all clean when you have the races in intact there. Not too shabby. Well, how in the hell did that happen? That manifested itself while wearing gloves. Must have got stabbed. Yeah. Delicious. It's okay to drink your own, but don't drink anybody else's. Here we've cleaned up the eccentrics. Gonna do a little bit more cleaning on this one here. It ain't perfect, but uh, the new cams fit just fine. We've got good movement, everything's fine. Uh, we'll need to clean some of this goo off of here so these cams rotate freely within the holes. But the reason I got you on camera today is to talk about, well, this is something kind of cool. They found us an F-script. Okay. Parts are cleaning up good, and I have not put the races in these yet because I still have some work to do on this drum. Specifically, we need to swap out the stud, right? This one's busted. So, <clears throat> there is a swedge here. What's a swedge? You see this right here? Okay. What you see right here used to be this. And what happens is back in the day during the manufacturing process, they press fitted these studs through the drum, through the hub, on up, and then a machine came down and stamped or pressed against this, this collar right here and literally spread this out just a little bit. So if you can imagine, there is a lip here. If you tried to drive this straight out without cutting out this swedge, then you risk damaging the drum, okay, and this. And what happens is that you elongate or you make the holes larger as you push them out and you have to do damage and potentially warp the, uh, the drum. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do, I don't have fancy equipment. All I got is this bench top 
deal. And I've got a 5 8 bi bimetal, uh, come on, man, focus on that. Bimetal pole saw. And we're going to go ahead and take and bore down probably half a tooth on here to cut out that swedge. And I'll demonstrate that and show you what's going on. We're going to cut this before we try to push it out. <clears throat> now, the 5 eighths is just snug on those threads, so it's going to cut away some threads, but that's okay. We don't need it. see where we cut the, the swell mark out and you can notice the jagged edges of the original biting teeth of the stud down there same thing with this side so let's take it over to the press now Definitely popped the uh, popped it loose, but I need a smaller uh, socket situation. Hang on a minute. The damn video stopped when I actually knocked out the stud. Right there it is. Let me show you a comparison. Right there is the location. You can see where I countersunk that drill just a little bit. Now, when you look at the new stud and put the old one next to it, you can see I didn't take much off that collar. Okay, if any, it will. Actually, the new stud has got, it's a lot shorter. But uh, yeah, so anyhow, you cut these down a little bit. They'll slide right out and you won't damage anything. Now let's put the new stud in. good next we're going to put races in okay got this really cool US general kit here that I use it a lot. And uh, basically it's pretty universal. And you can tell this is the one that I've used, used the most of. But you can drive in seals with it, okay? On this end, you can drive in races with this. And so we're gonna go ahead and set it up in order to drive the race in. All right. And I've already pre-fitted it, so I mean, it fits really good. This metal is softer than this, right? So it's going to take the punishment without destroying the race. Just make sure I don't have any debris on it. Take it down until it seats on that lip down there. And you'll feel it, bottoms out.
Can you see that? Okay. So, it's really that simple. We have brand new bearings, and this one we'll get ready. We'll we'll pack those bearings. This is a, there's an inner seal that goes on this particular side, so we'll pack the bearing. We'll lube up just the inside of the cavity. You don't have to go freaking gangbusters in there, but you only need to put enough in there for that. And then we'll put that bearing in there. We'll put the seal on, and this thing will be uh, damn near ready to install. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to show you that uh, uh, that are going to need to be done is that we're going to arc our shoes. Now, a lot of guys do these brake jobs in videos, and they don't show you about this arc of shoes. So, you're going to get your new set of shoes in here. Okay, and we're going to press that up against the drum, and we're going to look for any gaps. Now, here we got just a slight gap because of the of the, the arc of the drum, the way that it's cut, and the way that this is arced, uh, you're gonna have to arc your shoes. And the way that we do that is we put a, a sandpaper on the inside here, and we work the shoe this way, okay? And basically what we're doing is we're working down the high spots until this thing fits nice and flat, because when you go to break, you want 100% of that shoe grabbing this drum, right? Do the same thing with the short one. And uh, these are real close. I mean, I may not even have to arc these particular ones. Uh, they'll wear down on their own. But that's a pretty tight fit right there. That's not bad. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Probably not. So, but I do have a set of drums. Definitely there's a gap, right? So what happens is, is that the shoe actually has a space like that. And... You're only going to get, if you're lucky, 50% of the shoe grabbing. So when I get a drum that I have to arc, I'll do a video just on that and show you guys. Okay? Let's go ahead and flip this thing over and put the other race in. These are uh, Joe's Motor Pool bearings. I got these from Rory Grenier. Um, very nice stuff. All right. Let's flip it over. There's that mother beautiful stud. His come in packs of two. Okay, inner and outer, exact same bearings. It's interesting. The bearing size is the same as the M151. <laughs> That's the 151 hub there. Uh, okay, all right. Who cares, right? Nobody cares, Watson. Now, this is that boogered up hub. When it's outside, but it looks like we still got good meat on the inside here. So let's hope this little guy grabs. Snug as a bug in a rug. Okay. Looks good. Alright, not too bad. Let's go do the rest of the uh, let's go do the rest of them. Of course, we're not going to demonstrate the rest of them. We spent a considerable amount of time <clears throat> cleaning parts and getting things laid out for reassembly. Notice I have everything laid out here as a sequence. <clears throat> so the races are in. He uh, cleaned all the lug nuts, make sure everything fits and uh, spins freely without a problem. There's no big deal there. <clears throat> okay, inner uh, bearing, inner seal. And as you slide that onto the spindle, you're going to pack and uh, you're going to grease and pack up these bearings. Bearing goes in, followed by this washer, nut, washer, nut, 
Next is going to be the shim, the axle flange, the washer, castle nut with cotter pin, dust cap. So that's kind of the sequence in which things go back together. And uh, I just like to lay my parts out so everything's nice and neat and organized. And just do that to make sure I've got everything that I need to uh, complete the job. So <clears throat> this is how I'm, I'm kind of weird this way, but that's what I do. Same thing with the brakes. Um, all right, I told you we're still gonna have to uh, arc, the, arc the shoes on some of these, but everything's looking good. You know, we're getting very close to doing some reassembly. Before we do that though, the knuckle seals gotta come off and uh, we're gonna replace those because these are not working at all. And uh, they're toast. So we're gonna go ahead and pull all this stuff off clean all that goo off of there. We're gonna put new seals in here, then we're gonna fill that knuckle up with um, uh, with some of that cornhead grease from uh, John Deere. It's great stuff for the knuckles. Okay, so that's enough of that. Have a good day.